In the previous movie, you saw some of the basics of interaction frames and combined fragments and sequence diagrams. This movie and the next couple of movies will go into some more detailed examples so that you can see how various kinds of interaction frames might work in your sequence diagrams. In this movie, we'll look at options. In UML1, you could assign guard conditions only to individual messages in sequence diagrams. Let's look at an example. Here we have a sequence diagram where we have three different participants, sales, accounts receivable, and order fulfillment. And sales wants to place an order, so sales sends a message to accounts receivable, get past due balance for this particular customer ID, and accounts receivable returns the past due balance. Now depending on whether or not that past due balance is zero, then sales will or won't pass the message over to fulfillment to fill the order. So in UML1, the only way that you could do that guard condition would be to put it on the individual message that was being sent. And that would look like this. You'd put the guard condition in square brackets. So pass due balance equals zero. And then you'd add the message that would be sent if that Boolean condition were true. So we'll say fill order for this customer ID. So that was the way to do a guard condition in UML1. In these square brackets, if this condition, pass due balance equals zero, were true, then the message would be sent. If this guard condition were not true, then the message would not be sent. And that's a very handy way to do it if there's only one message that you're worried about. But you're probably already thinking, well, what if there are several messages that sales might want to pass if this condition were true? And that is where option comes in the option interaction frame. Often you run into situations that require more complex logic than putting a guard condition on a message will allow. So as we said, in this example there might be several messages that sales wants to be passing back and forth if this were true. And we don't want to take all the time of putting this guard condition on each and every one of those messages. So what you do is you create an interaction frame, the option interaction frame. So let's take a look at the messages that might be going back and forth if the past due balance equals zero. We'll have placing the order being sent to fulfillment. We might also have get cost being sent to fulfillment and the cost returned and then sales can send a message to accounts receivable to charge the customer. But all this activity is only going to take place if the past due balance equals zero. So we want to put a frame around all of this that's optional if our particular guard condition is met. So we would put in the operator, which is opt, and we would put the guard for the whole frame, not just for each particular message. So we'd say past due balance equals zero. And notice the way that the interaction frame here then says, if this condition is true, then all of these messages can be sent. The option operator is helpful when you have an if-then condition with no else. If you have an else, then you're going to want to use the alt frame. And we'll talk about that one in the next movie.